welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am gonna take you on a tour of Hudson, New York. It is such a charming town. Some say one of the most charming small towns in America. And I'm gonna take you on our afternoon day trip there where we explore the main street, go out to an incredible dinner, go for drinks. And my goal is just to give you a vibe and flavor for the town, whether you're planning a day trip or perhaps you wanna linger for a little bit longer. So if that sounds good, let's jump into the video. So Hudson is located in the Hudson River Valley area of New York. It literally does border the Hudson River, as the name might suggest. It is located south of Albany, but also about two hours and 15 minutes north of New York City by train. Probably about the same or slightly longer by a car. I guess it just depends on where you're coming from in the New York City area and traffic. So you could actually visit Hudson as a day trip from New York City. You also could do it as an overnight, but there actually is an Amtrak station in the town, which is really useful. When I did my research on Hudson, all of the guidebooks suggest going in the fall because of the gorgeous fall foliage in the Hudson River Valley. However, it does say that Hudson is beautiful and charming to visit in all of the seasons. I visited at the very end of June, which it was still really lovely because it's warm, it's summer in America, the weather's great, although I did visit during a rainy spell, which did kind of um, mean we got a later start than we had wanted to. However, so Hudson is known as the Brooklyn of Hudson River Valley, and I guess because I've also been to Brooklyn, I can see the comparison, but what really struck me as part of my visit, and I think something you will hopefully enjoy, is Warren Street, which is essentially like the main street, or if we're gonna use a British term, the high street of Hudson. It's about one mile long, and it is filled with all of these charming independent boutiques, antique shops, really great farm to table restaurants, and some hotels and other attractions. So if you are coming for a day trip, I think a really fantastic starting point would be to park your car somewhere along Warren Street, and stretch those legs. So even if you've come from the Amtrak, you can get over um, to Warren Street really easily from the station and get over, stretch your legs, stop for a coffee, go shopping, really enjoy your time in Hudson. Now for us, we actually had uh, dinner plans. So we went to an incredible spot in Hudson that I wanna tell you all about. We went for an early dinner at the Rivertown Lodge, which is an independently owned 27 room hotel, which is also located on Warren Street. And basically the history of this property, so it is a hotel, but it has a fantastic restaurant, which is called the Tavern as well. And this used to be the Warren Inn Motel, and it was actually first a movie theater from 1928 to 1958 and it was transformed first into the motel and then refurbished to be the property that we see today. Dinner at the Rivertown Tavern was fantastic. I started with a glass of wine, which was recommended by our server, and it did not disappoint. And we started with this Asian pear with foie gras and fennel and pecan. I should note that we had some food allergies in our group, so we might have removed some of the ingredients just to let you know, but this was sensational and such a great start. We then also had the steelhead trout crudo with cucumber agua chili, I hope I'm saying that correctly, with pickled beech mushrooms and a galangal granita and a fermented chili oil. This was also just so fresh, so fantastic. All of us loved it. We then also had, I think this was a special for the day, and I really hope I'm not wrong about this because I did screenshot the menu online, but not the one from the actual restaurant on the day, which is 
bad vlogger, but I believe this was a lamb tartare. And I noticed on their current menu, they have a venison tartare, but I'm pretty sure we had lamb um, because of the dietary needs of my group, but definitely check the menu because it changes seasonally. And then next up we had Gai Ian, which also hope I'm saying correctly, which is actually a Chinese broccoli. Doesn't this look like Swiss chard or some sort of like chard? Um, but this one comes with um, Bortaga, Bortaga and bay leaf oil and the flavors were just fantastic. Then actually the star of dinner was this roast, ro <laughs> roasted oyster mushrooms with pie pan, pumpkin seed and breadcrumbs and the sauce on this was so incredible. We loved this dish so much that we actually ordered two of them because we one was just not enough for our table. And then next up, we also tried, I've never had wild bluefish before. It almost looks a bit like you would expect like a sea bass or a trout or something with kind of the pan seared with kohlrabi, red onion, which they left out for me because that's one of my dietary restrictions, and anchoviati, which I, again, hope I'm pronouncing correctly, but this was also fantastic. I would definitely recommend the Rivertown Tavern if you are in the Hudson, New York area. Definitely take a little cheeky look at their Instagram as well too if you wanna see some of the latest um, kind of food items because they do, I think, breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. And oh my gosh, some of the breakfast and brunch items look amazing. All of the food is pretty much looks like a work of art, but also tastes fantastic. And I also, it's now kind of on my travel bucket list a bit to see if I can stay there at some point because the prices look pretty reasonable for Hudson, which a lot of the accommodation in Hudson is a bit pricey. And they also have some good deals for like week long stays, which I mean, wouldn't that be the dream for like the writers, creators kind of retreat in Hudson and just really getting to travel slowly and travel local, I think could be a really cool way to come back. But I will leave all of the details linked down below for the Rivertown Tavern and Hotel, as well as anywhere else I mention in this video. So after dinner, we decided to walk off all of our indulgences on Warren Street just to take in some more of the shops and really immerse ourselves in Hudson culture. Um, it's just such a charming small, I love like a really long street, but something as well too that I've done a lot of research on since my visit is the history of Hudson and it's so interesting. So Hudson was was uh, basically occupied by the native Mahakan people for hundreds of years. And basically Dutch colonists came in in the 17th century, um, calling it Claverick Landing, which I think is the translation into English. In 1662, the Dutch actually bought this piece of land from the Mahakans, and then some of the English colonists started to come in and the area grew population wise in 1783 after the American Revolutionary War, basically because the British Navy was attacking a lot of the seaside areas. As a result of the war, Quaker whalers and merchants from Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Providence, and other coastal communities that were impacted by the war moved inland and they actually moved to Hudson because again, it's on the river, so that's easier to get to. And they actually established Hudson as more of a thriving port town as a result of the population growing, so much so that in 1785, it was actually chartered as a town. In just five years, Hudson actually had its population soar, so much so that it became the 24th largest city in the United States. And then by 1820, it was actually also the fourth largest city in New York, which is kind of shocking to think about because when you go and visit today, it just feels like this charming small town. So you might be wondering, how did this boomerang effect happen of being huge population to being a smaller town? Well, let me tell you, it gets a little bit juicy. So during the 19th century, again, as a result of Hudson's proximity to New York and location on the river, it actually became a thriving industrial town, so much so that so many factories were actually developed there. And as a result of this, a lot more immigrants came into Hudson to work at the factories and some very wealthy factory owners and merchants 
really benefited from this, so much so that when you go through Hudson today, you see these stunning Victorian homes. Now, these were all built during that period, and they were the homes of kind of these factory owners and the very successful merchants of the time. In 1930, Hudson's population actually peaked with over 12,300 residents. So again, where did it all go downhill? During, I guess, the period from the late 1930s through the late 1940s, Hudson became what's called a center for vice. So in a way, maybe a bit of a victim of its own success or perhaps you know, more and more kind of uh, people came in that saw opportunities that were a little bit scandalous in the areas of gambling and prostitution. Hudson was home to over 50 bars and also had tons of brothels. And basically it got so out of control that in 1951, there were raids on all of the brothels in Hudson, basically removing them, disbanding them, trying to clean up the town. It's thought that the restoration of Hudson started in the early 1980s with antique stealers who started to gain popularity in the region. Basically, Hudson had this amazing main street, but there were a lot of dilapidated buildings and it presented a good real estate opportunity for people who saw the potential in the region. So in the 1980s, people started to realize the popularity of some of the antiques and then more and more shops started to pop up like a coffee shop, et cetera, as a result of some of the popularity of people coming into the area for those antiques. Then as more and more shops and restaurants and cafes moved in, the snowball effect happened and in a positive way, unlike its more controversial past. And today Hudson has 139 acres of a historic district. This covers the downtown, which is I think 45 blocks and 750 buildings. And obviously Warren Street, which is the one mile long main street, is also kind of the heart of Hudson that you can go and explore. But there are so many other wonderful things to see and explore in Hudson. And I'm gonna leave linked down below some of the blog posts that I found really helpful, uh, both for planning this visit and also some of my, my future wish list to come back and see a bit more in the region. After walking probably one mile all of Warren, Warren Street, we decided it was time for an after dinner drink before we had to head back to the place that we were staying, which is outside of Hudson. And we ended up going to the Maker Hotel, which I was so curious to check out. This is like such a fancy luxury hotel in Hudson. And it's actually founded by the co-owners of the cosmetics brand Fresh, of which I am a big fan. The hotel only has 11 rooms, but it has a stunning restaurant and also a really cool lounge bar ins inside. So we absolutely had to check that out and we did want to sit outside as well. Um, so we sat actually on this really lovely secluded patio with a fountain and we ordered drinks. So um, I actually don't remember exactly what my drink was, but I had, because the drink menu changes seasonally, so you can go pop on their website, which I will leave linked down below so you can see the latest menu of the moment. It's definitely more of a premium experience. I think the drinks are around like the 18 to $20 range. Um, but very worth it because the level of like mixologists that work at this hotel are really, really good. And I had this amazing drink that had watermelon in it and champagne and it's exactly the kind of refreshing but like sweet, lightly sweet cocktail. I love watermelon um, that I love. So it was just, if you're gonna have one, it's like a very special one. And then my friend ended up having a virgin mojito cocktail because she was not drinking, but she said it was fantastic. So this is definitely a great spot to go to and I would love to come back and have a meal here. So around out the video, our first visit to Hudson only gave me like the teaserest of tastes of Hudson and I have already fallen in love with this charming small town. I think as a traveler, it's exactly the kind of things that I love to do where you've got that amazing mile long main street where there are so many shops, 
to visit, like a place to grab coffee, meals, little bit of exploring, walk around. But then if you do have a car, there's it's such a great jumping off point for so many spots in the region. So if you did have a car, you can go explore, stay kind of in the town, walk around, and then do a lot of day trips from there, which would be lovely. But if you just wanna come up from New York City for a, like a day trip or even like an overnight or a weekend trip, you could so easily do this with the proximity of the train station to town and you would just have the loveliest time. So if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below or if you found this video helpful at all, please leave a comment. That really means the world to me. Also hit the like button if you're not so much of a commenter, commenter and this video was helpful to you. That also really shows me that people are enjoying the video. And then I would love it if you join me on this wonderful YouTube journey by subscribing. It costs you nothing. It just means that you see my videos when you pop back on YouTube and and this is the very beginning of me doing a whole series around the Catskills and the Hudson River Valley area. The last video I'm gonna do will be one summarizing all the places I went to. So I'm doing like individual videos on each place and then I'm gonna do a summary video. So I will try and link them all down below as I go, but make sure you're subscribed so you get to see the latest ones as they come out. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you soon.